right, we have made it to the promised land of patch 1.2. And damn, am I excited to be going over these patch notes. I am, you know, I'm a little salty that they delayed the patch a little bit longer than usual because of the Rising Tides release. But I'll get over it mainly because they nailed almost everything. Actually, no, pretty much every single card change in this patch update. So I am super excited about this, uh, and I agree with pretty much every single one of them, and mainly because i pretty sure I predicted most of these. Uh, so if you look at the other video that I put up of patch 1.2 predictions, link below in the description, uh, most of these I called, which I'm pretty excited about. So if you're new to the channel, my name is Justin, also known as Shit Just Works. If you are returning, welcome back, and I hope that you are as excited as I am to be going through these patch updates and you're as excited as I am to be making so many decks that do not include Badger Bear. I repeat, do not include Badger Bear. On top of that, we have another announcement and that is that we are doing a giveaway uh, in conjunction with Rough House Plays on our Game Wild podcast and I will get into that a little bit later in this video. So stick around and see how you can win a free copy of a game that myself and Rough House both bought, both enjoy the hell out of and we enjoyed it so much that we want to give away a free copy. <music> All right, so as we get into this, I do want to remind everybody, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, you know, you can wait till the end of the video. Make sure you like the video before you hit the like button, but don't forget to hit the like button, all right? So first up, we have good old Vlad. And boy, am I glad that Vlad got a buff. Oh my God, this champion just can't win most of the time. I wanted him to get a buff. I figured he would get a buff. But I was not expecting this buff. I was thinking something like maybe plus one health. Um, but, and I was thinking plus one health to boost his overall survivability. This actually I like better because it boosts you as a player's survivability. Your Nexus's survivability. Which is his level two now drains. Which means it's doing damage and healing your Nexus. And that is absolutely outstanding. And to be honest with you, kind of surprised I didn't uh, call this exact change as well. And I'm kind of surprised Riot didn't just put this in his original champion kit because, oh my god, this makes it feel so much more like Vlad's champion identity. It's crazy. So props to Riot for recognizing this one and cannot wait to, once again, try and see if Vlad is going to be more playable. Next up is Karma. Karma got the nerf. Karma got the ban hammer. A lot of people were calling this. So this is one of the few ones that I didn't I didn't necessarily predict. I, I kind of had a feeling they would end up doing something anyways. But deep down, I really wanted them to not touch Karma. Because I think it still might have been okay to not touch her. But I don't disagree with this change. They're changing her to 6 mana as opposed to 5. You can still play her same term as, as Ezreal. Which is why the nerf I don't think really matters too much uh you can also still play her like with a lot of other three cost cards plus ezreal and that's that's the biggest thing right like if you have 13 mana what cards can you combo with her in one turn um that also gives you seven mana left over to combo with her on an enlightened turn if you're trying to get you know all, all your stuff out in one turn with her before she dies so i do like this change i do think it will help a little bit i don't think it's necessarily needed uh, so I am curious to see if this completely kills any of these Ezreal Karma decks we got. Third champion a buff or nerf or change is Shen. Wait. Wait, that's it. I, f I forgot Shen was in the game. <laughs> he's, he's actually... Yeah, Shen's a champion. Shen exists. Shen is still probably bad, unfortunately. Uh, they gave him plus one attack. Um, I did also think that he was going to get buffed. I did call that as well. I knew they were going to do something to him. I don't know if I agree with the attack. I think that he probably should have had one additional health as opposed to attack to increase his survivability as a support champion. I don't know. We'll see if this helps, but I still don't think he's going to see a whole lot of play, unfortunately. All right, hold up. We're going to get into a couple more cards and then I'm going to go over the giveaway and how you guys can get yourself a copy of a free game. What is that game you may ask? You'll find out. Another one that we knew was coming was Vi. Oh my God, mind blown, right? 
Well, yep, she got the nerf to four health. So, very comfortable with this. I figured it was either going to be that or six cost. I do actually appreciate the four health more than the five, uh, sorry, the six cost. Because uh, I do still want her to be played like like a pure mid-game champion. Uh, you want to be able to drop her a little bit earlier than turn six. And now at four health, she can very critically uh, be challenged or be killed by something like a Garen or a Swiftwing Lancer. So that severely decreases her survivability and I think puts her on par with the rest of the five cost cards that are out there right now. All right, here's another one that I did not expect whatsoever. Literally came out of left field, Hecarim. Uh, I don't, I mean, Hecarim obviously wasn't seeing a lot of play. So, you know, seeing this kind of makes sense. Like, okay, a card that's not being played, they tend to like to buff stuff that's not being played a lot right now so that everything is kind of on an even playing field and we see a little bit of everything in the meta. But I wasn't expecting this because Hecarim, I think, is still already a good champion. I also don't know how much this will really impact him as a champion. I think... Riot's now realizing that the whole 5 attack, 5 health is a very big uh, turning point as far as survivability and stats are concerned. And I think that's exactly why he got this buff to 5 attack. Same deal, just like Vi, now he will be able to trade evenly with a level 1 Garen um, and a lot of other 5 health stuff, including Vi. Right now he will actually be able to challenge Vi uh, as far as if I were to block him or something like that. So so we'll see if he actually sees an increase in play. Great Horn Companion actually got a buff. So uh, another one that I, I came out of left field, but again, also makes sense. So we're going to get into Grizzled Ranger and Badger Bear in a second. I know you guys are probably so surprised that they're even on this list, right? So Great Horn Companion is kind of like the bone. Like they, they, they Riot kind of tossed a bone to Demacia like, hey, we know that we screwed up this whole grizzled ranger badger bear thing and like we're going to nerf them into the ground. So we're just going to like toss you this this little buff here that kind of isn't too significant, but we're going to make it seem like it's really significant. And you can kind of tell that in the patch notes where they're like, "Hey guys, this also buffs remembrance. This is really good now." Like, nah, it's just it's just another 5/5 five five from remembrance. Granted, having scout is pretty neat. Um so it is a good it is a good uh follower to get now with Remembrance, it was already okay to get it with Remembrance, so I don't know how much Remembrance is really buffed with that, but either way, now it gets plus one attack. Pretty cool. I don't. I think it will see more play, but I don't see this card really fitting into any amazing strategies anytime soon. All right, guys, a couple, all right, a couple more cards, then I swear we'll go over the giveaway. I will say, the game, it's gonna be Monster Train. If you guys haven't checked it out yet, you need to check it out. It's a roguelike game. It's so freaking good, but we're giving away a free copy. All right, the Ranger and the Badger. All right, finally. Um, I've been waiting since the set drop for this. I'm, listen, I'm not gonna take credit for this. There's a ton of people that figured these changes were coming, especially the Grizzled Ranger, right? Most people thought it was gonna go to three attack. It went to three attack. I think it's super balanced at three attack. Uh, it's super balanced at three attack because of the nerf to Badger Bear as well. Uh, so essentially now you're getting six five worth of stats um, with with uh, something that can attack twice kind of sort of you know with the scout effect uh, and you're basically getting it for four mana I do think that is a much more balanced card especially because if you do silence the grizzled ranger or something you don't get the effect yada 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 so I think it's much more balanced uh, again the badger bear is now a three four down one attack. I think that is very balanced as well. I do get concerned that it might fall out of popularity entirely as just a vanilla card uh, because it is now a 3-4 and that doesn't really stand out per se. For health, I do still think is a big deal. So I think it still might see play now and maybe for the next set or two. Uh, but I'm concerned about the future of that card. So we'll see. But overall, oh, thank God. Thank God. Laurent Chevalier also was not expecting this one. Again, I'm pretty sure this is bone number two uh, for Demacia. They're like, hey, we're just going to buff another random Demacia card that nobody really plays so that it doesn't seem like we're like hating on Demacia right now. Still don't think this will see play. Still think it's hard to get off its effect with two health. One health was impossible. Two health is pretty much still near impossible. So I still don't think this will see play, uh, but we'll see. I don't know. I do like it because it was a bad card that got a buff. So it's I'm not going to argue with it. Standalone. Okay, so this card actually, I think, flew under the radar. So here's one that I, I never really talked about. Um, I don't think I even talked about it in the, the patch predictions in my other video. 
and I think it's because everybody was so focused on Vi and Badger Bear and Grizzled Ranger and um, even even Unrelenting Spirit, even though uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. So, I, but I do, I 100% agree with this. And if I had actually thought about it, yeah. I mean, standalone is kind of toxic when you know, you're playing it on a solitary monk on turn three and also playing it with a standalone. And now you have, what is that? A seven, four, or sorry, a seven, six elusive like what on turn three, which, and there's really nothing your opponent can do about it for like two turns. So like you, you almost have to have a vengeance at that point or something similar. So I, I don't really like that. That was even a thing. Um, and I think that's really the whole problem with that card was that three mana break point of, you can hold three spell mana and play a unit on turn three. Now that it's at four mana, you can only play essentially a two cost unit with this on turn three and that puts you in a whole new ballpark of what is actually worth buffing with this card. So I do like it. You can still play it on something like Lucian, right? On turn three, which is pretty cool. So um, love this nerf. Love the change to four cost. Can't wait to see what this. I think this is going to be the... This with the Badger Bear and the Grizzle Ranger is going to be a huge impact to the metagame. All right, here we go. So the Monster Train giveaway. Here's what's going down. I have a podcast, if you didn't know, with my boy Rough House Plays. Just shooting the shit about video games on a weekly basis. So the link will be in the description below of this video, which you will need that. That link will bring you to a video that actually explains the rules of, of how to get a free copy of Monster Train. All right. But I'm also going to explain it here. So you have to do, I think it's four things. Four things. You need to subscribe here. Subscribe to Shit Just Works. Subscribe to Rough House Plays channel. Subscribe to the Game Wild TV channel, which is our podcast slash vodcast channel. And go to Apple iTunes or Apple Podcast or whatever the heck the name of the app. The podcast thing that you listen to for Apple. Go to that. Give us a review. Listen to a podcast. Give us a review, right? And be honest. We want good feedback. We want to know what you guys want to hear in the podcast on a weekly basis. Let us know. And guys, we live in a great era for video games. Can I just can I just throw that out there? So if you want a free video game, Monster Train, again, it's a roguelike game. It's kind of like Slay the Spire if you've ever played Slay the Spire. Uh, it's a pretty cool game. Very fun. We're giving away a free copy. You do all four things. You get entered. And we will be giving that game to you via Steam. So check it out. Give all those channels a sub. Review the podcast. And enter yourself for a chance to win. Oh yeah, Legion Rearguard. So another one that definitely deserved a nerf that I that flew under the radar. I think everybody was so focused on Boom Crew Rookie, they kind of forgot how how good this card really is. And I think now it's actually in line with the whole strategy and the the overall cost of camp block, right? So I had spoken in the past with some other people, and I think mentioned it in a video or, or two that. Um, camp block for me is valued at like two attack or one mana, right? So to be a three, two seemed a little bit much to be a three, one, which is four worth of stats is like two mana, right? Uh, whereas a one, one would be two worth of stats for one mana. So I do think that can't block three, one, you lose two attack, you make it be able to block. Now it's a one for one, one, which is obviously a little bit underpowered, but early curve, you have to keep in mind tempo is a thing. The big deal with this is that Thermo Beam can now kill us on turn one. And that was the biggest crux of this card was that, or crux to other decks, is that you could play this card knowing that if you're playing against PNZ, there's no removal that will kill this on turn one. Absolutely, it's impossible. Now, Thermo Beam will take care of this very nicely. Kindly Cavern Keeper uh, got a buff to three attack. Pretty cool. I like it a lot. Uh, I actually think that this might be overbuffed though. I think that... Healing your Nexus 3 is, is already pretty strong for having a 2-3 on the board. Like, 3 health is pretty good. This might be a little bit too strong. I would have preferred to see, like, heal your Nexus 4, but keep it at a 2-3. I think that would have been more in line with, with the cost. Because, um, like, Drain Life is 4. Actually, well, Drain Life is you heal 4, but you have to deal 4 damage to something. So, honestly, that might be 2 mana to heal your Nexus 4 is really the value right there. I'm not sure, but I do think this might be a little too strong. I do support it. I think they're going to probably play around with it because they're trying to experiment with more healing stuff, especially with how prevalent burn and aggro has been. So I'm curious to see how this changes the meta. Deep Meditation, also another card that deserved some sort of change. And I do agree with this. Uh, this was a two cost draw too, which was kind of why it was broken. Um, now with it costing five on the surface and the discounted version costing three, 
I think it's still really good, right? Because you can spend three spell mana to play this card. It's still in line with spell mana somewhere along the line, and I think that still makes this incredibly good. So absolutely in support of this. Um, I think it's great. I think it tones down combo decks a little bit. I do think they kind of over nerf the whole Karma Ezreal stuff because of this. Like this plus Karma being nerfed, definitely a big hit. So I'm curious to see if that deck can still come back from it. But overall, I fully support this nerf. Okay, so here's the one that I actually not only agree with, not only did I think this was exactly what they're going to change it to, even with those two things said, I'm concerned that it still might be wrong. <laughs> like, it's, it might be too much of a nerf. Boom Crew Rookie is now a 1-3. And as much as that was my first go-to, like, yeah, put it at 3 health, solves your problem. And I do think that will solve the Burn Aggro problem. It's just, will that totally kill the archetype? Especially considering they also nerfed Rear Guard. So they clearly thought Burn Aggro was an issue. Very surprised to see both nerfed in the same patch. I don't know if that's a little overkill. Um, there is a lot of direct Nexus damage cards out there. So honestly, this might just open up people to newer cards that pretty much do the same thing, just in a different way um, as far as aggro is concerned. So we'll see. I'm a little bit concerned, but I do agree with this change. And yeah, again, this is one of those cards alongside Badger Bear and um, Ranger and Rear Guard and this and Standalone. Huge, huge shift in the meta coming. Brood Awakening, back to six mana. Uh, Riot is notorious at this point in this game for like creating a card, nerfing it, buffing it, re-nerfing it. <laughs> like they've done it with a few cards now. This card is perfect example. It was five, then up to six, then back to five, now back to six. I think it's gonna stay at six for a while, because this this in Corinna control was just. I don't think this really deserved to be in current control. I, it needs to be in a spider deck or a token deck. Having it be in a control deck doesn't make sense to me. So I agree with the nerf. Happy to see it. Long tooth and technically chum the waters. So chum the waters had a bug that you couldn't play it unless there was a unit on the field to summon the long tooth and just not give something vulnerable. Now you can. So that's nice. And now long tooth has plus one health, which is also nice because honestly, it feels kind of bad to get a five one for four mana. Especially when like a Heimer turret is 4-1 with Overwhelm for like no mana. So um, definitely happy to see this change. Hopefully it makes Fizz a little bit more playable. Fizz already hasn't really seen too much play. But this does show me that they are aware that Fizz isn't the greatest right now. And they're trying to do some external things to kind of support his strategy. And my two favorite buffs coming up. First up we have Monkey Idol. I had thought about building a Monkey Idol deck. And then thought to not do it because it didn't seem that great. Uh, now, with 5 health, seems decent, to be honest with you. Something like, you know, pairing Monkey Idol with Dawn Speakers seems kind of fun and, and trolly, right? Uh, it definitely seems like a, a fun archetype or a fun strategy. So I think this will now allow me and others to kind of experiment a little bit more with this card and make some fun deck archetypes. And the second card I'm super excited about is Slotbot. Which was already seeing some play, not gonna lie. I don't even really think this needed def like technically to be nerfed, but I don't think it hurts that this card is nerfed because it is more of a fun card. Um, it is three costs for five worth of stats, one four. Obviously, those stats are shifting every turn anyways. So I do think that having five worth of stats like that is good. So yeah, 100% agree with Slotbot. M maybe a Slotbot deck's coming in the future. I don't know, but pretty soup to see them also buffing some very fun, different... Um, you know, strategies and gameplay types that uh, that nobody's really testing right now. All right, guys, that's it. That is it. That is all of the patch 1.2 notes. And I'm I gotta get off. I gotta get off this video now. I gotta go start building other decks. Probably Vlad. I really want to try Vlad. God, I always want to do Vlad Brom, and it just never works out. It's just such a terrible. Th Will of Ionia is a thing, man. It's a freaking card. Anyways. I hope you guys liked the video. I hope you guys liked all the nerfs and buffs. I know I did. I definitely am very excited that Riot seems to be really keeping its thumb on the pulse of the community and listening to what everybody has to say. So until next time, everybody, stay healthy, stay positive. I hope shit just works for you, and peace out.